test your knowledge, project management documentation. Now, the next five questions aim to test your knowledge on the types of documentation used in the system development lifecycle, primarily at the actual understanding the problem stage and at the planning stage. Some of these types of documentation overlap between two and some go through the entire thing altogether. All right, so let's have a look at these next five questions. So there's question one, identify the four elements of a feasibility study. Question two, explain the use of journals and diaries by project managers when developing a system. Question three, what is the purpose of a requirements report? Question four, outline the importance of a communication management plan. And question five, draw a Gantt chart that could be used for scheduling a standard project over a five week period. Now I encourage you to pause your video here and we'll go over the answers at 55 seconds. Okay, let's begin going through these answers. So firstly, identify the four elements of a feasibility study. Now these four elements include economic feasibility, which relates to money, technical feasibility, which relates to the information technology, hardware and software, operational feasibility, which is basically people using the system and mainly the participants being able to use the actual information system to carry out the information processes, and schedule feasibility, the amount of time available to make this project happen. Question two, explain the use of journals and diaries by project managers when developing a system. Now, diaries and journals are used by project managers to record the progress of the system being developed, ensuring the project sticks to schedule. They allow the manager to document their own personal design process through the recording of ideas, maybe quotes from contractors and drawings of their ideas as well, related to their thoughts and the decisions being made throughout the project. These journals and diaries can be a very useful tool in being shown to others and them gaining an understanding for, for the justification of design choices. So basically they're the ideas of the project manager documented down in a variety of different ways. It's all dated so you can see it going to schedule and lets you know if it's going on track and essentially paints a picture of the journey of the development of this project. Question three, what is the purpose of a requirements report? Now, a requirements report is used to gain an understanding of how an existing information system works and potentially what elements of the existing system need to be carried over to a new system if development's gonna go ahead. It is used at the understanding the problem stage in order for the project manager to gain a better understanding of this existing system. Okay, so we do it at the first stage just so we can fully understand what's already in place at the company that we're trying to develop the system for. It is then also used at the planning stage to make sure that the essential requirements of the old system still exist and go into the new system, as well as add new requirements that might be possible through information technology, basically, and changes in technology that have happened over the years. It also can be used at the evaluation stage for checking that all the initial requirements have been met and basically deeming whether the new system is a success because it does meet all the initial requirements that were outlined at the beginning stages. Question four, outline the importance of a communication management plan. Now, as the name suggests, it does relate to communication. So a communication management plan outlines the means and mediums. So basically, how communication will be done and what tools will be used in order to make communication happen. So like online tools such as video conferencing or messaging apps. Okay, that will be used for communication between team members who are basically working on a project together. The plan also outlines how communication will be documented and if need be, how will requirements be updated as a result of communication. So is there some sort of minutes for team meetings and then we look at the minutes and then we update the project. Basically with an instant messaging program, the actual messages are in text so that it also already has documentation we can refer back to immediately. For video conferencing, no one is actually writing down so someone might have to be deemed a minutes taker during that video conference meeting in order for a recording of the meetings to be done and then those notes need to be uploaded somewhere so everyone in the different parts of the world that are involved in that video conference can all get an update of what uh, decisions came out of that meeting. The final question, draw a Gantt chart that could be used for scheduling a standard project over a five week period. So let's take a look at a Gantt chart again. And essentially what we need to remember is we need to put in our number of weeks and they are our columns. So week one, week two, week three, week four, four and week five as the question outlines. And then going down the rows, 
we include our different stages of the system development life cycle. So understanding the problem, planning, designing, implementation, and testing, evaluating, and maintaining. You can include the sub-projects that are occurring at those stages. So interviewing participants, the creation of the requirement report, okay? And then you allocate how much time would go to those actual events. So that will both take one week. Then at the planning stage, okay, we have our updating of the requirement report, development of prototype and feasibility study. And as you can see, different parts of the project can be happening at the same time. They may be getting done by different team members. With the designing stage, we're doing our system modeling and obviously building up the system, which will take a sufficient amount of time. Okay, implementation and participant training. Okay, and then finally, testing the system and evaluation. Okay, so really a Gantt chart is used for planning out our approach for, to developing the new system. We need to be, have a schedule in place to ensure that we aren't wasting time, because remember, as we've mentioned, wasting time is wasting money, okay? And we obviously have fixed budgets. So the program, uh, the development of the new project needs to be going to a specific schedule, and the Gantt chart allows us to be referred to and ensure that we are sticking the schedule. So if I know if I get to week two and I'm still doing the understand the problem, I'm behind schedule and I've really got to either pick up the game or I might have to go and speak to the uh, client that I'm developing the system for and say we need more time, which I really don't want to do because we'll make our company look bad. So with these five questions, I hope they've given you a good understanding of the different documentation used at the understand the problem and planning stages. And essentially you'll be able to draw these tools or model these tools in your own projects, as well as if they're asking an exam question. Hope you got five out of five.